There is a top secret undeclared war that is going on behind the scenes right now. You see, the last few weeks, I found myself investigating something way deeper than I ever would have imagined. In fact, it even had me going back to history books, which is something I haven't done since middle school before I dropped out at the age of 17. And in a minute, I'll tell you what exactly I was investigating. But for now, let me tell you why I started investigating in the first place. You know that feeling when you see something happen in the media, a narrative spread, it's being perpetuated, and it just doesn't sit right with you. You just, something feels off. You know, as if there was some sort of, I don't know agenda behind it? Well, that's exactly how I feel about this war against masculinity and freedom of speech that's really, really started to ramp up in the last few months especially. Recently, it's gone so bad that it feels like they are trying to silence us by pushing so much BS down our throats that we nearly asphyxiate and aren't even capable of speaking anymore. And the worst part is all of these attacks seem so specific and coordinated that you know I can't help but feel that there may be a bigger story that's not being told. So so I decided to investigate who is behind all of this and more importantly, why. Now for a few months, people have noticed that if you approach a specific subsection of topics from points of view that defy or challenge the narrative of what is considered right or truthful by the establishment, well then, you get silenced. I mean, look, over the years, I've experienced this firsthand, you know, back in 2020, releasing a, a video on YouTube about a certain cough cough and uh, having a YouTube channel strike and the video taken down within 12 hours. When talking about that same topic on Instagram, I've had my blue tick removed twice. And in fact, another time that I talked about it, my whole account just got deactivated. But luckily, with a great network comes great connections. So whatever, each time we managed to, to bounce back. Then a few weeks after that incident, I decided to call out the fragility of the UK banking sector specifically right now, and that your money is not safe in the banks. And you need to understand that when you put your money in the bank, legally, it is actually no longer your money anymore. And in the UK, if specific banks were to collapse, which it looks very, very imminent, you are insured up to 85,000 pounds, and that is it. It doesn't matter 85 million pounds in your bank account. So I went on a long discussion about this, and lo and behold, the next morning, I wake up to find out that one of my bank accounts with uh, almost a million pounds in there just so happened to be closed. No trace of it, no access to my money, nothing. It's as if the account never even existed. It also just so happened that that account happened to be in the UK. Funny how that works. And let me tell you the most scary thing about this. There's people who have had it far worse than I have. There are thousands of people that are experiencing this daily from regular individuals to influencers with millions of followers. There is undoubtedly something fishy going on here. But what is it? and why. So I've had this fire inside of me recently to start searching for some answers. Why is there a war against people who speak up against the media's agenda and encourage people to think for themselves? Why is it that only one side of the argument gets silenced? And lastly, who is behind all of this? All of these questions led me down so many different rabbit holes. And the path that was the scariest was just looking back at the history of our civilization as a whole. And here's why. I found myself reading about the motives and end goals of the ancient Greek wars, the Roman civilization, all the way down to World War I and II. And I will say at first, I thought I might have been exaggerating by comparing an actual war with guns and bombs and planes to a few social media cancellations and bans. But after really digging deep into the past wars the world has lived through, I have noticed that there is something truly nefarious going on. The first thing I noticed is that every single one of the wars that I studied had one big underlying factor that tied them all together. And can you guess what that was? It was not freedom or lack of. It was not religion. It was not money. What sparked every single one of those wars was the strive for control. And I noticed something else. It was not the strive for one nation to control another or the strive of its people to control their land, but rather the strive of a very small group of individuals to control everything that they could put their hands on. And above all, perpetuate such control for generations to come. From the Roman Wars to the Cold Wars, there was always a small group of people acting behind the scenes with their hidden motives masked behind false ideals. Now, the next obvious question is, who is this small group of individuals who gets to control the world around us from behind the scenes? Well, they cannot be named because they act in the shadows. No one sees them. And they act exclusively through their little puppets. The politicians, the government, the woke celebrities and influencers, journalists, the media, pulling the strings from above to propagate the narratives that better fit their hidden objectives through these puppets. And that, my friends, 
is why I call them the puppet masters. Everything that happens around you is carefully planned by the puppet masters in control and executed by their puppets that we get to see around us. Now, most people would stop there, but I asked myself, is this really the final answer? And the more I thought about this answer, the, the more questions I had. How do the puppet masters achieve control? And how have a few people managed to control an entire civilization through the course of history? And this is where things start to get very concerning. And this is also where I started to realize that all of this has everything to do with what we're living through right now. Look, wars have always been about control, but there's a much bigger story that is not being told here. And what if I told you that this very same war against men, well, it's happened before in history. You see, if you go back to the early 6th century, Western Europe was living through a period marked by economic, intellectual, and cultural decline. This period is referred to as the Dark Ages. And here is why an era that happened so long ago is so similar to what we're living through today. You see, the words from Pope Innocent III, who was the reigning pope at the time, sums up the view that society had on men back then. God formed man from the slime of the earth, an element having less dignity than others. He goes on to say, men commits depraved acts by which he offends God. He will become food for the worms and a mass of rottenness, which will forever stink and reek. And to top it all off, he says, they that will become rich, fall into temptation and into the snare of the devil and into many unprofitable and hurtful desires which drown men into destruction and perdition. You see, men were viewed as sinful and rotten creatures with no serve to society. So, they didn't deserve any respect. Do you think men are important? Well, like for what? <laughs> <laughs> so look, does... Any of that sound familiar to you? But wait, there's more. You see, most people never realize just how dark the Dark Ages actually were. Hundreds of millions were ravaged by plague, malnutrition, and starvation, while better nourished invaders repeatedly looted them for their last remaining resources. And many genuinely believed it was the first real glimpse of an apocalypse. In fact, the times during the Dark Ages got so bad that no significant scientific or technological progress was made during the five centuries it spanned through, to the point where there are particular groups of historians who thought this five centuries never even actually happened. And that was all due to the unbelievable lack of progress in Europe during that time. I mean, Think about it, a span of 500 years being so unproductive to the human race that there's people who actually don't believe it even happened. And you wanna know the worst part of it all? History repeats itself. I mean, just look at what's happening around you. You've got social justice warriors controlling the biggest nations telling you where you can go, who in your family you can visit for Christmas, what you can say on social media, and even what temperature you're allowed to set your heating to. I mean, all you need to do is look at what's going on with energy prices in Europe right now. And just like there was the dark ages, they are referring to this winter as the dark winter. I really need this to sink in for most people right now. They are going into a period where they are going to have to decide between hot water or electricity. And even worse, the government will soon start even controlling what times of the day you are allowed those rations. And if this sounds like an absolutely crazy thought, this has been happening for years and years in South Africa. They just cut off the electricity whenever they want for load shedding. And by the way, that was not during a time of crisis like there is in Europe right now. On top of that, you've got dozens of social media accounts and personalities getting banned and silenced for speaking up and calling out the tyrannical BS happening around us under the premise, obviously, of stopping misinformation. And if that wasn't enough, now PayPal has a new policy that they've since retracted because they've seen just how insane the backlash is. And they had so many people trying to withdraw their money from PayPal because they realized this is getting into scary territory. Now, if you post something that PayPal deems as misinformation, they can take $2,500 from your account. By the way, all of you guys can fact check this, but ever since PayPal released this statement, they have done a very good job at cleaning up the Google search history because they realized just how much of a mistake they made trying to push out this policy. But I want you to think about just how crazy that is. And by the way, if no one said anything about it, or if there wasn't as much of a backlash, they were about to gladly roll out that policy. And you need to understand that soon enough, they're gonna be telling you how many times a week you can shower, 
how many times a week you can eat meat, until what time you're allowed to stay awake, and any other tyranny they can push down your throat. Picture a social credit system scoring how good of a complying and obeying citizen you are, or in plain English, how good of a slave you are. And depending on how good you are, you can access basic essential services. Think banking, transportation services, credit. And if you're a bad behaving slave, well, bad news for you. Your bank account, frozen. Internet, you don't have access to it. Buying cars, not allowed. You wanna travel? That's only for the good slaves. So if you think that things of this magnitude will never happen, or that the new dark ages is an exaggeration, well, think again, because it's already happening. And I haven't even started talking about the most effective form of mass control used by the puppet masters. And they use this to keep you a slave for your entire lifetime. You see, times have changed since the sixth century. People have evolved. And as a result, so did the methods and tools of mass control. I mean, it's not too hard to realize that back in the days, controlling people was considerably easier due to the lack of access to information. There were no printed books and only a small fraction of the world's population was literate. That meant that whatever the authority figures such as the Pope and the church preached as truth, well, it was just taken as gospel. That's an important point, by the way, and we'll get back to it in a few minutes. And now, although authority figures are still used to this day to have false lies and narratives thrown in your face as the truth and have them endorsed by celebrities and the fact checkers, we know that this isn't as powerful as the tools they had 1500 years ago. But you see, the puppet masters are very clever with their methods and they realized they were losing power and the slaves were breaking free of their control. So what did they do? They created the most effective and under the radar tool of mass control ever known to man. A tool so effective that today traps over half the world's population and get people to use it with joy thinking that it is a tool to help them. And no, it's not your phone if you're thinking that. It's also not social media. And it's not money either, but it is directly linked to money. Or more specifically, how you use your money. And here's how it works. Most people try to match their expenses with their income level. And they do that because they're trying to portray to the world through their expenses, their income level. And look, I get it, that's normal behavior, we all do it, but you fall into a trap. And it's a very clever trap set up by the puppet masters themselves. And that's because since your income doesn't grow linearly, as most people think, it means it will go up and down. And as a result, the closer your expense level is to your income level, the less room for error you have. In fact, most people have no room for error at all since they live paycheck to paycheck and depend on the income from next month to pay this month's bills. And if you don't manage this carefully, which most people don't, you are always at risk of your income dropping below the level of your expenses. And when that happens, you get into debt. And congratulations, the puppet masters just caught you. I mean, if you really think about it, all debt is, is a slave pass. Basically, now you owe someone and you have to work to pay them. You can't use your money for anything else because you have to pay them first. And until you pay them, you are leashed to this debt. So you're basically their slave. And the thing is, the way debt is set up is literally for you not to be able to pay it. How? Well, when the charge of interest rates was first legally allowed, the max yearly interest rate that could be charged was 3%. Today, we have a credit card interest ranging anywhere from 15 to 25%, which means if you get caught in this trap and don't pay your debt extremely fast, which is definitely not the case for the majority of individuals, your debt will grow at such a fast pace that it will become unpayable within just a few months, which leads you into a lifetime of debt, basically a lifetime of slavery. Currently, experts say that around 80% of Americans are in debt. This means that eight out of every 10 people in the US are slaves. And if you think slavery was abolished centuries ago, Think again, because the number of slaves in this world has never been as high as it is today. They're just modern day slaves. And the way that you keep slaves happy is by leading them to believe that they're not slaves at all, which is exactly what debt allows them to do. Now compare this to the social structures of the dark ages. And at the time you were basically part of one of three different groups. You were either in a position of power, such as kings or noble family or part of the church. Those were the puppet masters of the time, the ones pulling the strings. Or you were a vessel, the class that protected the puppet masters and executed their agendas. Basically the politicians, journalists, big corporate tycoons and woke celebrities of today. And if you weren't part of any of those two, you were a peasant which is really just a soft word for slave. You basically worked all day, every day, just to have enough money to pay for dinner, which is exactly what 80% of the world's population is today. They work all day, every day, just to end up with enough money to pay the bills and nothing left at the end of the month. Modern day slaves, and that's not all. In fact, 
there's far more dirt under the rug. Debt is just one of the multiple tools they use. They have another tool that is just as effective, if not even more effective than debt. And I'm gonna reveal that to you in the second episode and show you exactly how to protect yourself against it. Now, the fact is we are in a situation today where the puppet masters are on the verge of successfully implementing their mass control plan. And it basically consists of three big phases. Phase one, implement modern day slavery. And they already successfully completed this phase through debt and through the second mass control tool that I'll reveal during our second episode of Digital Renaissance. Phase two, silencing. And historically, whenever a group of people try to control entire nations, there's always a few individuals who stand up against it. If they get enough momentum, a revolution starts. And the puppet masters are well aware of this risk. And the best way to avoid it from happening is by making sure that no one hears these individuals. Basically, deplatforming. And we can all clearly see this is the phase of the plan that they're currently in. And the final phase, complete control. And this is where an era of total government control and surveillance begins. And it all starts with their social credit system, which sets the stage for legal government surveillance of its citizens, total control over your bank accounts and purchases, and internet access. They will even be able to take away your ability to travel. And if they manage to get to the final phase, well then welcome to an era of total surveillance in tyranny. They will be able to force you to comply with their agenda because if you don't, they just shut off your money. And that'll be the end of people speaking up for themselves. They would have successfully silenced everyone. It'll be the end of our ability to question things and do what we believe is right for us and the people around us. And if we don't step up and stop this from happening, the next God knows how many centuries are not going to look very pretty for any of us. And the puppet masters already have their puppets in place. I mean, look, let's be honest. The U.S. is governed by a senior citizen who can barely put together coherent sentences by himself. 700 billion and a trillion, 300 million billion dollars. The prices of food, water and gas have reached all time highs. And all the government is doing is printing more dollars, which, as we all know, just makes the situation even worse. And the UK almost collapsed multiple times in the last few weeks until the Bank of England stepped in. There's nothing in the pensions, the pound is wrecked, and it will go into hyperinflation soon. And yeah, sure, the government is subsidizing energy costs because it reached a point where regular citizens can't even afford it anymore. But look, at the end of the day, who do you think pays for that long term? And it's not just the UK. It's all around Europe. There's a gas and energy crisis spreading across the whole continent due to the conflict. And people are about to have to choose between heating or electricity. And in Canada, the situation is even worse. I mean, just ask the truckers there. The Prime Minister Trudeau was granted special emergency powers during the protests against their forced sea shot law. He then got the banks to freeze the accounts of the protesters and anyone who even donated to their cause. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, having your bank account frozen for saying something or supporting something or doing something that the puppet masters don't like, it's not a fun experience. Long story short, the world is falling apart just as the puppet masters want it. And now it is at this point that a bunch of people ask me, okay, so I live in the US, I live in the UK, I live in Europe. What should I do? What's the solution? Well, first of all, you should not be thinking about the solution today. You should have thought about the solution two years ago when you realized the government can lock you in your house for the common flu. And the second that you realize the government can lock you in your house or send you to jail for spending Christmas with your grandmother, does that really not raise alarm bells for you? So you should have spent the last two years building in order to have financial freedom, location freedom and time freedom so the government can't touch you. I mean, look, when I had one of my UK bank accounts closed, no existence of it. They can't seem to locate the funds. I mean, yeah, sure, almost a million pounds, it sucks, but I've prepared for years that if something like that happens, I still sleep easy at night. So you should have been building this moat, this layer of protection around yourself the last two years. But if you haven't done that yet, well, there's actually still one last light at the end of the tunnel. So look, History repeats itself. Now, this can be a bad thing or this can be an incredible thing, depending on which course history takes, because it's in periods of monumental crisis that once in a life opportunities arise. We are literally witnessing a new chapter of the history books being written and we get to choose what this new chapter looks like. The mission is in our hands. But the question is, how do we do that? How do we actually guide things in the right direction? Well, the answer to this question was buried in one of my history books back from high school. So here's what happened. After more than 500 years living through the Dark Ages, people, and more specifically men, 
were tired of the worldview that had been propagated for centuries that viewed man as a sinful and rotten creature. They were tired of living as peasants under the control of a few undeserving individuals. Have you ever heard that difficult times create strong men? Well, the men, once again, started to become aware of their abilities and their strengths. And through this newly found strength, a new type of man emerged. He was called the Renaissance man. The Renaissance men pushed the boundaries of what was thought possible in science, technology, art, architecture and business and men started to be seen as god's creation endowed with reason with strength and created in his image the renaissance men were the managers of an era in which culture art knowledge and technology advanced at lightning speeds an era which we now know as the renaissance a period of rebirth the renaissance men put an end to centuries of control and manipulation by the puppet masters and how did they do that well first they stepped up and challenged the old views on men they were detrimental to society. Secondly, through their work and inventions, they broke the church's monopoly on knowledge, the main mass control used by the puppet masters at the time. And one of those inventions was the printing machine by Gutenberg. Before printing, in order to obtain a book, you'd have to slaughter an entire flock of sheep. And that was a little expensive. And not only that, during the Dark Ages, almost everyone was illiterate. The only ones that could read or write were from wealthy families or men of the church. The people who made or owned books looked after them like treasures. A copyist would only produce 10 to 15 copies of a book in an entire lifetime which made the books incredibly valuable. But suddenly, with the invention of printing, books could be made for little sums of money, and finally reading became democratic. Knowledge became widely available, which means more people could start freeing themselves and start critically thinking. And not only that, but one of the most common manipulation tactics by the puppet masters was to change the original writings and interpretations of books as more copies were produced. And that practice was pretty much destroyed by the invention of printing. And as a result, the traditional myths propagated by the church weren't acceptable anymore. And people started to wake up. So now I'm sure you understand why the puppet masters are so afraid of people talking and speaking up for what's right, specifically men and getting other men to think critically rather than just being willfully blind to what's going on in the world. So everything that's happening right now in the world, it happened before. They've experienced this. They understand that it was those very same acts that broke their half a millennia grip on the population. The Renaissance men put an end to the Dark Ages and led the way to one of the most incredible periods that mankind has ever experienced. With incredible advancements in technology, art, culture, as well as humankind development. And for the very first time, men's self-confidence and pride in their achievements wasn't seen as sinful. I mean, wow, wouldn't that be a sight? Living in a society that celebrates other people's excellence, other people's achievements, men striving, wanting to get better, wanting to be better, wanting to be providers, wanting to take care of the people around them and not being told that they're toxically masculine for it. So if you aspire for that, this may be one of the most important messages you hear in your entire lifetime because we are on the verge of society being like that. I mean, look, just hear me out. The Renaissance occurred after a great crisis in the land and was associated with major social change. After men got tired of the worldview that had men as toxic and sinful creatures and tried to downplay masculine figures and people who try to work on becoming the best versions of themselves. I mean, doesn't that sound very similar to something that we're living through right now? And not only that, but the very fact that the puppet masters are trying to silence the people that are speaking up that actually speaks volumes. That tells you everything you need to know, which is that they are scared of revolution. They can see there's a crack in the dam. So listen, we are on the verge of living a new Renaissance period where old ideas are gonna be defied and surpassed and a big social change is gonna happen. And not only that, but if we can get through this correctly, then humanity is gonna experience one of the most prosperous eras that we have ever gone through, where riches will be created and the average guy will have the same amount of opportunities and luxuries that only kings could afford just a few centuries ago. And those that take advantage of it will experience the climb in social hierarchy like never before seen in human mankind. They will enjoy the spoils of a shift in era. And I call this new era the digital renaissance. And just like during the renaissance, the people who were a force for change were the renaissance men. During the digital renaissance, we have a new figure to look to, the new renaissance man. History repeats itself, and we are currently experiencing an inflection point that could take us one of two ways. One, we enter the new dark age, a dark age that last time spanned five centuries long. That's more than 500 years of shaming men, destroying their ambition, preventing the progress of humankind, and as a result, 
having multiple generations on the palm of their hands under their control, obeying and behaving as good slaves. And if that happens, the new Dark Ages is going to be magnitudes worse than the original Dark Age. Or we have another possible turn this next chapter can take. We enter a new renaissance the digital renaissance, where mankind goes back to celebrating the traits of real men and create the greatest opportunity of our lifetime to create generational wealth, just like during the original dark ages where the renaissance men back then had to step up and become the pioneers of one of the greatest times that humans have ever lived through. So going back to your question, what is the solution? What should we do in order to escape these terrible times? Well, there is only one solution you need to become the new renaissance man. The new renaissance man is characterized by the same self-confidence and willingness to work on himself, just like the original renaissance men, but also a few extra characteristics that are needed in order to navigate the turbulent times that we're living through. First of all, he has financial freedom. He has FU money. And by the way, you don't need to be making millions of dollars a year to have FU money. FU money to me means Hmm. You don't like what's happening in a city. You don't like what's happening in a country. All right, cool. I'll leave. It's the ability to have the financial means to just pack up your stuff, travel, get on a flight, move to another country for a few months. From there, go to another country and to be able to do all of that without having to be super frugal, without having to save money on coffee, without having to take a route with four connecting flights just because it's cheaper. Essentially, his decisions are not based on money. He is not chained and locked in by money. For the Renaissance man, money's not really a part of the equation anymore. It's you know something he doesn't really ever have to think about. Second, he has location freedom. As I said, the new Renaissance man is not tied down to one city. His income is not determined by just one city, which is extremely important because right now, as the puppet masters, as their control grows and grows, that is one of the tools that they use to keep you enslaved is they know you can't move. If you are sick and tired and you're fed up of what is being propagated, of what is being shoved down your throat, you can't do anything about it because you can't leave. Whereas the new Renaissance man, if he doesn't like it, eh, he just leaves. He can travel wherever he wants and he has the means and abilities to do that because his income is not tied down to one city. And lastly, he has time freedom because at the end of the day, you can make millions of dollars a year, but if you're in the office 12 hours a day or you have to work 14 hour days in order to make that happen, you're still a slave. You're spending so much of your time and effort to get something that you can't even use because you're stuck on the hamster wheel. Whereas the new Renaissance man knows how to put systems in place. So that way, when he's not working, money is still being made. Now, if you want to know how to become the new Renaissance man, I'm going to show you exactly how to do this step by step in episode two of the digital Renaissance. It's going to premiere Wednesday at 5 p.m. So make sure you turn on your post notifications because I'm going to show you step by step how to work your way to the top and become a new Renaissance man. Listen to me right now. We as men, we need to step up and fight for what's right, just like the Renaissance men did centuries ago. You know, it's funny. Have you ever looked at a history book and just sat there and thought to yourself, I wonder if the people who lived through that period realized that they were literally living through history. They were living through something that would be written about for centuries to come and would change the future and the course of mankind as a whole. You know, I'm sure we've all had that thought to ourselves, but the reality is it's very hard to realize that you're living through something like that in the moment. But ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing one of the most important inflection points in history that I have ever seen. And it is my job right now to call that out to let you know that you are witnessing history and you can be on the right side of history or you can be on the wrong side of history. And that's a choice you need to make. And quite frankly, the only way this can turn out well for you, for me, for your future children, for your future wife, for your grandchildren and the rest of your lineage and your blood is if you step up, you have to become one of the new Renaissance men, one of the men that will push society forward. The men who will stop the puppet masters from enslaving the population and taking us into another dark age. And the men who ultimately will be rewarded with riches and abundance for stepping up, working on themselves, getting the financial freedom, the location freedom and the time freedom. And by the way, if you're sitting there and you're wondering, OK, what is, you know, me, you know, making some money, being able to travel the world? What, what does that have to do with rewriting history? It's because when you cannot be enslaved, they have no control. But as it currently stands, when we have weak men that can be silenced, that can be bought off, you know, that they can lower your social credit score. And that's all it takes in order to shut you up. You need to understand that you're in action when you don't take care of yourself and make yourself a free individual. It's not just affecting you. It's affecting your entire lineage. So if you want to step up and become a new digital renaissance man, I'm going to be showing you exactly how 
in episode two of the digital renaissance i need you to be there live on the second episode right as it premieres so that way you can support our fight you know the amount of people we have in our corner willing to fight this fight is enormous and i can tell you right now putting this event together because it's very different to the last event i put together you know the last one i put together was just very businessy it was strict business but in the last half a year since i did a free event like this the world has changed so much. It's so scary and, it, and it's unfortunate. I don't feel like I can just sit here and talk very happily about business and this and that. This event has almost a darker tone to it, but that's because I need to wake you up. And I can tell you right now that I am personally putting on the line all of my social media profiles because there's a big chance that I get all of my accounts taken down for talking about stuff like this and doing it to such a mass audience and an event like this. So look, whether it's the social media accounts, whether it's the millions and millions of dollars that I put on the line because I talk about the stuff that other people are so afraid to address and speak about. And no matter how many bank accounts I have to go through in order to get this message to you, I don't care. I am willing to pay the price. And by the way, I am not the only one. One of my buddies, Hamza, like I told you about, he lost half of his entire income because Skillshare shut him down. He had his Instagram deactivated. He's had multiple channel strikes on multiple different accounts. He has gone through hell and back just like I have to get this message to you guys. And by the way, I have actually brought on Hamza as one of the guest speakers in one of the following episodes. And he's never done anything like this before because he believes so strongly in the mission and the message of this digital renaissance event. He knows that this is bigger than any of us. We are the new digital renaissance men. And on that note, I will see you Wednesday at 5 p.m. UK time.